Hi, I'm Alastair, I'm a games designer, and in this video I want to give you an idea for a fairly simple but I think really effective puzzle which you can use in an escape room game. So in this puzzle players discover a radio and they need to tune it to the correct frequency. Now that frequency might have been given to them as a numeric code from the solution of a previous puzzle for example. And when they tune the radio to that frequency they hear a broadcast message which in turn gives them another clue or a piece of information needed to proceed in the room. Now what's really nice about this puzzle is that you can do it using any functioning radio at all and you don't need to make any modifications to the radio to make it work. So I've just got a regular portable radio here but you could also use a handheld radio like this or let's say you had an escape room that was themed in the Cold War or in the 1940s, you could find a functioning FM radio receiver from that era which would look totally in place in the setting of your room. So the magic that makes this puzzle work is this little device here. So this is sold as an in-car FM transmitter. And the idea is that if you've got a car that has an FM radio built into it, but that doesn't connect to your phone or your MP3 player, you can take this little device instead and you plug this 3.5mm jack here into the headphone out socket of your MP3 player instead. Then you select the frequency you want at the top. So you can select any frequency between uh, 87 megahertz and 107 megahertz, which are commonly used frequencies uh, in different countries of the world. And so I've chosen 98.1 there. And now when I click uh, play on my MP3 player, if I now take my FM radio and tune to the frequency uh, which I've just chosen, uh, so which was 98.1. So what's really nice about this puzzle is that because I'm using a genuine radio I am going to pick up other frequencies on the way um, and I also get that nice sort of white noise um, now when I do that so 98.1 there, there we go so when I'm tuned to the exact frequency if I hold that up to the mic so you can hear it that is my broadcast which is coming from a uh, recorded sound loop from my mp3 player here so if you wanted to you could basically create the puzzle exactly like that you could take the FM radio transmitter and plug it into an MP3 player or perhaps into the audio output of a PC in your control room and simply have it play the same audio file on loop over and over again. Then when players discover the radio and tune it to the correct frequency, they'll hear the message and whatever information it might contain. But what about if you wanted to take the puzzle one step further and instead of simply broadcasting the same static audio file, maybe you want a message which dynamically changes based on the state of other puzzles in the room. Or maybe you want to use the radio as a hint delivery system so that the games master can actually control the information in the broadcast delivered to the players. So to demonstrate that, I've taken the transmitter and wired it to an Arduino instead. And I'm going to use the Arduino to generate a dynamic Morse code message which is going to be broadcast on the selected FM frequency. Here's how it's wired together. So this is nice and really straightforward. Um, I've got the FM transmitter here plugged into a 3.5mm breakout module. And uh, what that does is that exposes the different contact points that you get on uh, an audio jack into uh, different pins here that you can easily wire into uh, an Arduino or other processor. So I'm taking the sleeve connection, uh, that's the outermost part of the um, jack, that's going to ground. And then I'm just using the tip, so the very extreme end of the connector, that's going to digital pin 8. And I'm going to use the tone function of the Arduino library to generate a square wave signal on that pin and that's going to create the audio, the Morse code, dots and dashes, which are going to be uh, transformed into an audio signal, which is then going to be broadcast on the transmitter. Ring 1 and Ring 2, I'm not making use of. Um, you'd use those if you wanted to transmit a stereo audio signal, for example, um, onto the jack. But we're not going to use those. We're just using the sleeve and the tip. And that's it. So here's the code that's running on the Arduino. 
Um, so, as always, I start my code with uh, a section of constants at the top. So we define the uh, speaker pin. This is going to be that pin 8 that we're going to create the audio tone signal on that's going to be sent to the FM transmitter. I've also defined an LED pin. Now, I didn't show this in the video, but the Arduino, when it sends a Morse code signal, as well as generating the tone that's going to be uh, transmitted by the FM transmitter, it also flashes an LED uh, on and off in time with the Morse code message as well. Um, so that's kind of just a useful feature to have um, if you want to be, if you want to know whether the Arduino is kind of on and functioning correctly and transmitting the code uh, without having the radio tuned to the correct frequency, you can kind of look at the LED and, and see if it's flashing the correct uh, pattern in time. So that's why I've put that in there as well. But these two are both going to work um, in synchronization with each other, basically. They're both going to encode the same Morse code message. This one as an audio signal and this one as uh, flashes and LED. Okay, uh, the next constant I've called interval. So um, obviously a, a Morse code message is transmitted at a certain kind of tempo. And depending on how familiar you are with uh, the Morse code alphabet, it might take you longer to decode that message if you kind of have to look up each symbol one at a time, it takes quite a long time. So the interval here, this defines uh, the kind of the base tempo at which the message is sent. So 200 here, that value is the number of milliseconds that a single dot takes. So dot 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 has got three dots in it, each of them will be uh, 200 milliseconds long. If you increase this value, it's going to have the effect of slowing down the tempo of the Morse code pattern. Um, so you can you know, try tweaking that value to, to get something you like. Um, next, I've got two uh, arrays. So I've got one array at the top here, which has the letters of the alphabet and the uh, Morse code pattern of dots and dashes that corresponds to each one. And I've got an array here, which is the digits from zero to nine and the Morse code pattern for each of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these arrays, we're going to use them as a lookup. So let's say we want to send a message that uh, has the letter D in it. Uh, well, that's the fourth letter of the alphabet. So we're going to look at the fourth element in this array. So here's the first element, second, third, fourth, and we're going to retrieve dash dot dot. That's going to be how we know what the encoding for any particular letter is. So these are kind of like lookup tables for uh, each sort of character we might send in our Morse code string. Okay, then we go to the setup function. Uh, now I create a serial connection. Now in uh, many of my projects I only use a serial connection if I'm uh, debugging the code. So I'd normally put that inside a little uh, if debug kind of conditional preprocessor statement. Uh, when I first wrote this code um, what my intention was actually was to send a message over the serial connection. So you type a message in from a PC, let's say, to the Arduino, and then that gets encoded and sent in real time. And in fact, most of the code that's here is still designed with that in mind, um, in which case the serial connection was actually required. So I didn't wrap that in a, in a debug statement. I've made the code a bit simpler for the purposes of the tutorial so I've now just got a static message which is sent on a loop um, in which case this actually isn't required anymore but I've left it there because if you do want to go back to that other design whereby you actually type a message and it sends it dynamically um, you'll need the serial connection to do that so I've left that in just to to uh, make that ready for you basically um, and finally we uh, in the setup we just set up the LED pin and the speaker pin, like I say, they're both going to be outputs because they're both going to match the same signal as each other, really. And we just uh, start off with the LED turned off. Then we go into our main program loop. So we, um, this is going to be the message that is sent on loop. It's a character array, and I've just put this is a test. Not very exciting to start with, but you can obviously change that to anything you want. And then what we do on each iteration through the loop, we uh, loop over each of the characters in that message to send. So we get the, the length of the message, that's what this bit does here, 
And then we've got a little uh, for loop here. So, so we're going to start with the, the zeroth character, so at the very beginning. We're going to go up to the end of the string here, and we're going to look at each character one at a time. And we're going to retrieve that character from the message, and we'll put that into a variable called C. And what we'll do first of all, we'll just say what C is to the serial monitor. So what this is going to do is very slowly print one character at a time. It's going to print the message that we're sending. And then having got the character, what we're going to do is we're going to look up the pattern that goes with that character. So this is what I was referring to those arrays at the top, those lookup tables. So um, when we take this character here, it's, it's, a, it's a char. So this is going to have an ASCII value associated with it. So uh, ASCII values that lie in this range, these correspond to lowercase letters of the alphabet. So we're going to, uh, and starting with 97, uh, so we're going to look them up in our Morse letters array up here. Uh, we're going to take off uh, that offset value, that first value we're going to take off. So that A is going to correspond to the index 0, B is going to be index 1, C is index 3, etc. So we're going to look up the pattern that goes with the character we've retrieved from the message. We'll send the pattern to the serial monitor as well. So first of all we sent the character itself. Now we're sending the pattern that goes with the character, and then we'll actually call the send Morse code function, which is going to um, encode that and send that to the FM transmitter. We'll take a look at that uh, function in a moment. Um, if the character value, if the ASCII character value lies in this range, well, that's an uppercase letter then. So we still look it up in the, the same array as we did before, because the, the Morse code pattern for an uppercase A is the same as the Morse code pattern for a lowercase A, we just take off a different offset value. So we end up uh, back at the index again, so A is 0, B is 1, C is 3, etc. Exactly the same, print out the pattern to the serial monitor and then send it. Uh, you've probably got the hang of this by now. So if the character, if the ASCII character is somewhere in this range, those are the digits from 0 to 9. So we'll look up the pattern from the uh, uh, digits array. Or if it's a 32, well, that's the uh, ASCII space character. So we'll just put a, a space on, and that corresponds to a uh, gap in the Morse code pattern itself. Now, according to the Morse code standard, uh, a word gap is actually seven beats long. Um, now, the thing is, a word gap obviously happens at the end of a letter already. So we've had a letter, um, then we've had a two unit gap after that, and then we would need uh, another four unit gaps to make up to a total of seven, if that makes sense. So, I don't know, I don't really understand the Morse code standard itself, but this is what feels like a sensible amount of rhythmic gap before you then send the next uh, word, basically. That's what it means. And finally, we'll put a, a bit of a delay in before we then send the message again. Now, uh, these functions up here did call uh, a function called send Morse code, and it passed it the pattern that it needed to send. So let's just take a look at what send Morse code does. So send Morse code accepts that token array for the letter or the number that's being sent so it's uh, one of these patterns up here, for example, that's been retrieved from the lookup table. We're then going to pass that to um, the send Morse code function. So we're going to loop over each of those tokens, which are either a dot or a dash. Uh, if it's a dot, we're going to turn Morse on for one beat and then turn it off again. And if it's a dash, we're going to turn the Morse on for three beats and then turn it off again. So again, according to the, the Morse code standard, uh, a dash should last for three times as long as a dot. Uh, so that's where I got those from. Well, okay, what do Morse on and Morse off do? Um, Morse on, well, uh, that sends a high value to the LED. That's what's going to make the LED light up. And it's also going to create a tone on the speaker pin. Um, I'm choosing a fairly arbitrary hertz value there. Um, you can make that higher or lower to, to make a, a higher or lower pitched 
um, sort of beep when you, you send your dots and dashes. And then we're going to delay by um, the amount of time that was determined up here. So whether it was a, a one or a three, depending on whether it was a dot or a dash. And more soft, well, that's the, that's the other half of this function. So now we're going to turn the LED off again. We're going to turn the speaker off again by calling no tone. And we're going to put the same delay in again. Um, so uh, that's it. So I've got that sketch running on the Arduino here. And as you can see, I've also selected the frequency that the FM transmitter is going to be broadcasting on. So I'm just going to leave that running down there. And instead, I'm going to take my trusty pocket radio and turn this on. And what I'm now going to do is try to tune to that frequency and see if I can pick up my broadcast. Uh, so as I scroll through stations, I'll get something on the way. No, not that. Uh, no. Keep going. So 98.1. And there we go, and hopefully you can hear that. So obviously it's a looping message, so if I pick it up halfway through, I simply need to wait for it to get to the end and then begin back again at the beginning. Um, and there you go. So I'm gonna turn that off or else that's gonna be quite annoying. So like I said, what I really like about this puzzle is that you can implement it using any type of functioning radio at all. And that makes it really easy to deploy into lots of different types of escape room themes and games. The other thing I like about it is that a lot of existing escape room puzzles are already designed to give numeric codes to the players. Normally that's um, the solution to a combination padlock. But you could very easily change one of those existing puzzles so that the numeric combination was instead the frequency that they had to tune the radio to, to hear the message. Um, these devices themselves have a broadcast range of around 10 to 15 meters. So uh, they're not very high power, and the advantage of that means that certainly here in the UK, and I believe in other countries around the world, you don't need to worry about any kind of FM broadcasting license or certification or anything like that, because they're such low power devices. What it does mean is that you need to possibly think about the location of the transmitter compared to the location of the receiver. If players have a portable radio like this that they're able to carry around the room, it's possible that the signal will be uh, stronger or possibly only be able to pick up in certain parts of the room than in others. But then you could actually make that into a gameplay feature as well. Perhaps not only do players need to find the radio and also the frequency to tune to, but also follow directions as to which part of the room they physically need to be standing in in order to pick up that transmission signal. I'm sure there are many other ways you can take this further as well. I mean, I showed a dynamic Morse code message there, but maybe you could have a dynamic text-to-speech instead. Um, something like Google Voice, where you can enter a message and have it spoken out by a computerised AI character. And that could be a really exciting basis for an interaction between players and someone on the other end of a radio transmission, which was in fact all dynamically automated. So lots of ideas that you can take this further. But um, even if you use the very basic form of it, hopefully that's given you some, uh, some ideas of new puzzles you can use in your escape rooms. And thanks very much for watching.